watch um, watch it in, in about a week's time. Tina Koto Katoa, I'm Alison Pask, and today it is a pleasure to be hosting this webinar with today's guest, Nikki Pazant. This webinar, as I said, is going to be recorded, so you can watch it again to um, put in place all the wonderful hints that Nikki's going to give us with food photography. If you could make the most of the question and answer box at the base of the webinar panel, and we'll keep an eye on the questions as we go and answer, make an attempt to answer those questions at the end of the webinar today. Nikki is a well-known journalist and former editor of the very popular Healthy Food Guide magazine. She has her own cookbook, which um, is about 10 years old now. Um, I'm sure Nikki's going to tell us more about the photos for that as well. Um, and she has a popular Instagram page. I'm not quite sure about any other um, social media, but that Nikki will today tell us about the photos that she takes for these, um, these pages and give us a bit of a 101 on the basics of food photography. So kia ora Nikki, I'm one of those people that um, some people hate where I actually have to take a photo of any presented, beautifully presented food and if we're out at a restaurant it's, hold on, before you get your knife and fork, can I just take a photo? And um, I would love to know how to take better photos on especially on my phone so I'm particularly looking forward to today's session so um, please take it away Nikki. Kia ora. thanks Alison and um, hi everybody I, I yeah I'm the same if I'm in a restaurant actually anyone who comes to eat with me knows that they need to just hold off for a minute before we eat so that I can take it. Uh, that's that's very that's just how we roll, uh, and and you know most most foodies. It's funny when you go to a to a, a lunch or a dinner with sole food writers or food food media. It's the same thing before anyone meets. Is everyone's taking photos, and it's just like you know, it's what we do. Um, so I yeah I as you said I have I spent um, twelve years as editor as editor of the food magazine and the Healthy Food Guide, and then. Since then, have subsequently been contributing um, food re recipes and food styling. So I've been involved in many, many food shoots for the magazine. And I've also recently been doing uh, my own food shoots for people such as Five Plus a Day. I've been doing um, photography and recipes for the, um, the seasonal recipe books that I've done for them. And I also obviously shoot stuff for my... Instagram and other social media. So yeah, so and all of my stuff I do on my phone. And I think that that, so today I'm just gonna share what I know about what I've learned from my perspective as an editor, like what makes a good food photo and also uh, what, from a point of view of taking a photo, how do you take a good picture of, of food? Uh, for, and it's just, these are just my tips. They're not all the tips there are in the world. And there certainly are people who spend a lot more time doing photography and styling than I do. Uh, but this is, hopefully these things will help you if you are wanting to take, you know, interesting pictures and elevate your food photography a little bit. So I'm going to share my screen with you now and we'll get going. Uh, we are here. <coughs> Okay, you got me? Yeah. Okay, so um, so I just want to start with what we started with all of our, all of the sessions that I've done, all of these webinars that I've done, which is about, which is communication and storytelling. And uh, food, food is storytelling too. So, to, so photography is storytelling and pictures of your food are definitely telling a story. So just keep that in mind. What's the story that you're trying to tell? And I think that the, the rule number one, my number one rule for any kind of photography is that great food makes the photo. So if you have got beautiful, uh, colourful, uh, you know, healthy, delicious looking food, you are, you know, at least halfway there to getting a good picture. And the kind of food that we are all into, which is, you know, plant based, colourful, uh, you know, healthy food is food that does naturally look beautiful on the plate anyway. And so all you've got to do really is to capture that. So uh, the, the next biggest thing is really about light. And natural light is really what we want here. So you definitely, if you can, 
need to get in a, in a, in a situation where you've got beautiful natural light. Uh, and that's true. I mean, you know how you feel when you're in lovely natural light? It, you feel good and things look good. Uh, and so and so we can, you know, what you want is if there's a light on in your room, turn the light off. Fluorescent lighting is just the kiss of death for food, so you don't want any fluorescent lighting. And it, nighttime um, is usually pretty bad as well. I will avoid taking pictures of my dinner in the winter because basically any kind of artificial lighting indoor at nighttime, the images are, there's just really, it's very difficult to make them look good. So what you want is a lovely natural light coming in if you can from the side um, and just just you can just experiment with the light a wee bit but you need you need light you don't want light behind you because obviously you're going to be blocking the light and you don't want light in front of you because then you, your food is going to be in shadow so you really want your light coming over your shoulder or coming in from the side uh, and these are just some examples of things um, where you can really see that in action. So we've just got a lovely gentle light coming in from the side. You don't want sunlight, and you, don't, you don't want bright sun and you don't want full sun, absolutely not. And so you can see like if I, um, if I just stop that share for a minute <clears throat> and if you can see my face here, you can just experiment with light, okay? So, so here is me, I'm, a, I'm slightly silhouetted here, but if I turn around, you can see the light changing and moving around excuse my messy background here around my, and how the light changes on my face and you can do this yourself with your food so when you've got your see there i am totally in shadow and now coming around and it's the lights changing and diffusing so when you've got your plate of food in front of you just move around move around it and um, try and see where the light's coming from and which is the best place for you to be shooting from and, and try a few different options and you'll, you'll get a feel for where you want your light to be coming from. Um, so there's, there's some technical stuff that I will start with. So some, some tips for photo success. Um, get to know your, your phone, or if you've got a camera, really get to know your, your camera. Um, because the, the phones now are amazing with what they can do. And you just need to just study up or, or you know um, have a look online at some tutorials you'll see things on there's heaps of YouTube videos about how to get the most out of your camera phone um, I use an iPhone um, I've got an iPhone uh, I think it's an 11 and this the camera on this is uh, is really amazing and it's I have seen the evolution of cameras on phones um, as I've, as I've upgraded my phone over the years. And I know that the Android phones are also similarly really, really good and have amazing features. So really just get to know what your phone can do um, and understand the features that it has on it. Um, and then I would say, make use of the, of the creative modes that you have in your camera. So with my iPhone, I use portrait mode a lot. Now portrait mode is not designed to shoot food, but it really does a great job of shooting food and so most of the food that I shoot with my phone, I use portrait mode. And you just need to play around with that and how it works. I know that other kinds of Android phones have different, um, have different formats and some of them even have a food mode. So use those modes. And then the other thing I would say is um, to use the, use the editing functions, make use of those. They've come a long way too. That use editing on the iPhone used to be really you know, minimal and quite bad. Now the editing functions on your photos are really, really good. And so um, have a look at those and have a play around with those as well and see what you can do. The ones that I tend to really stick with are exposure. So you, you might want to just boost the exposure slightly if, you're, if your images are looking a little bit um, flat or dull. And then brightness and saturation that I don't tend to go too crazy with the other ones um, but really do have a look at those at those um, editing modes if you don't have a very good editor on your phone on your on your it's built into your phone there are third-party apps that you can use and for a long time I used one called camera plus which was very good um, but there are lots of other different photo editing apps that you can use which will do a very good job of editing of just just elevating your pics a bit, and making them bringing them to life, and just as a, just as a professional photographer would do when they edit things in post. Um, 
And what I would say about that is just don't get too carried away because you can you can get into the editing and you can look at all the features and you can go, oh, look how I can make it more bright and more colorful. You still want your food to look natural and to look real. And that was my, one of my bugbears as an, as an editor. Um, sometimes I would see in magazines food that I felt that looked very hyper real, too bright, too saturated, too blown out, the images. So I think that I, I want my food to look like it does look in real life. Um, just, just I want it to look really delicious and nice, but I want it to still look real. And then you also need to just think about how your photos are going to be used. Like what is, if, you are, if you're doing it for someone else, if you're doing it for, you know, if you're doing it for a for an ebook like I'm like I've just been doing, or if you're doing it for um, a website, <clears throat> or you're doing it for a for an Instagram feed, you know what is what is the food going to be? What is this food picture going to be used for? And and make it to purpose. Um, and so here are some tips now that for how to make your your food your photos look great from a creative point of view. So you really need to try different angles. Um, this is kind of, it's kind of a no-brainer, but it's, but it's, you know, it's, it, you can't shoot all food from the same angle. So here is this dish shot from a, a kind of a, a three-quarter angle, you can see there, and then here's the same dish from an overhead angle, and you can see they look quite different. So we've got, sorry, we've got three-quarter overhead, and you can decide, when you do that, you can decide what you think looks best, but it's always good, I think, and I do always do this, to, to, to take different angles of the same food, and then when you look at it um, afterwards, you can decide which is the best angle for that particular food. Um, to get an overhead angle, you really need to get quite high. So I, you can put things on the floor, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, if, you, if you're using it, if you're with a photographer, what they will have a proper rig that, that is very useful for this, but, but for me, uh, it's a step ladder, and there's me, last week at my sister's house, um, doing it, doing some five plus a day stuff. I've got a lovely little like two step step ladder. And what I will do is I will shoot it from the ground. Then I will take one step up on my step ladder and shoot it there. And then I'll take two steps up and get right up high and shoot it from over the top. Uh, and then you can see um, what looks best. And you can see there, that's actually a good example of where we, we're getting lovely light coming in from the side too. She's got a west facing, uh, room there and I'm and I've got lovely light coming in from the side on that food um, and then you need to try different orientations too and again this will depend on what the photos are going to be used for so if you're using if, if it's for social media generally a, a, a portrait orientation like this is probably better so you want a style and angle for a portrait orientation but then if it's for a website or if it's for print um, you know a, a portrait, I mean a landscape orientation is, is probably going to be better. So here's the same food again, shot portrait, and then you, you can see that I've had to restyle it for a landscape. So just move some props around and get things, um, get things looking composed and balanced for that orientation. So definitely whatever you shoot, do two different orientations just in case you need it. Because when you crop it down, or when, it, when it's cropped in social or when it's cropped on a website to, to a template, you're going to have different things happen and you need a bit of space to be able to do that. Um, here is just some of my kind of food and um, prop styling tips. Um, it's a good idea to try different um, setups for your for your food if you can. So I mean I'm talking this is food that you're cooking in your own kitchen obviously it's not um, it's not restaurant food. I mean, or you though, you can try this also in a restaurant if you really want to. So here we've got a, it's a, key, oh, it's a, was it not a quiche? It's a, it's actually a savory clafouti, but you can see it there is um, in the dish as it's just come out of the oven. It's looking lovely. It's golden. Always, always try and get your food golden if you can. And even to the point of getting it over, over where you'd normally do it. Um, you want you want golden and crispy if you can on top of things. So that looks nice. That's that's a lovely shot. That's the that's the dish as it's out of the oven. You know, it's it's a nicely composed shot. But you can see that when we take a slice out and we plate up a slice and we just have that there on the side, that it just kind of gives you a different look and just kind of elevates it a little bit. So there it is there and there it is there. You get more. There's more life in this shot than there was in the other one. Um, and likewise, you might want to also try 
different plate settings. So do, so is this a dish that looks best in multiples? Should I do a two shot with this one? Do I show two plates of food? Um, or do I just, do I go in and just do one plate? So try that as well. Try the different kind of settings just to, and make sure that you get variation in your shots so that you can decide what you're gonna use in the end. Um, when it comes to props, it, it's very useful to have a variety of things to use um, and, and you really wanna layer. So you don't just wanna put a plate of food on a table. You wanna try and have different things going on so that you've got um, some texture and some layers in the background. So, and when I say big, borrow or steal, I really mean just, just really think outside the square if you can. I, I will borrow props and I will hire them from, if, if for my professional shoots, I would, I would hire props from a prop house. Uh, at the moment, I'm, I'm borrowing and borrowing props from stores, which you can do. Um, and I'm also sort of just borrowing props from people around me. So this, this is an example here. Um, so what I've got there, that cloth that you can see in the background, that blue and white is actually, um, is a tea towel that my sister brought over with something wrapped around something. And I just went, oh, I love that. That would be great. We'll put that in the shot. Because uh, I love the texture and the colors in it. And then the backdrop you can see there is a piece of actually a piece of fabric from my fabric stash from my sewing from my sewing stash, um, and the same with um, this one here. The um, the background that you can see there is actually a sheet from my linen cupboard, and the the cloth on the side is in fact it's a, it's a vintage kimono that I've got hanging here on my door. Um, so and you know so you can you can really just need to look around you for interesting textures and colors and things that you want to. Um, that you want to use to sort of elevate your shot and then um, try it just you just want to think layers and here we've got some examples we've got a, we've got a board there we've got a plate underneath the plate I mean it's not how you would naturally serve your food but it just adds interest to the photo so that one looks a bit low res some of these I've taken off pdfs um, but you know you get the idea there we've got we've got a lot going on um, in terms of just textures and layers in the background that add some interest uh, it is important to give food space, uh, by which I mean, you don't, I, it, it used to be a thing. If you look at magazines in the 90s or, um, or recipe books from kind of the 90s or early 2000s, they, they, they have, they get up really close to the food. That used to be a thing. It used to be a fashion for food photography that you would be really close to the food to the point that it was almost bigger than life size. Um, that's not really these things do go in fashions but but now what looks modern is not very very close-up shots of food most of the time it's something that's a little bit more um a little bit more spacious and i think it's i think and this is my aesthetic you know i'm, I'm speaking from my aesthetic as an editor and a and a um you know this is what i like to look at i don't want to see crowded plates of food i don't want to see crowded um, shots with just that I can't identify what the food is. I think it's important to be able to tell what you're looking at in your food photography. Um, and so I also think that you know it's you don't have to crowd up your plates either. You don't have to put all the food on the plate that you're going to be serving. You can just fudge it a little bit and and give it like these ones. Give it a bit more um, space so that it can be easily identified what you're looking at. On the plate. I think that's just it's just a nice modern um, aesthetic. This is just one of my things um, for photography. If you want your greens to be really really beautiful and green, as you'll know from being cooks, just just blanch them, just just undercook them slightly um, so that they keep that beautiful beautiful green color and the same with the same with anything any other colorful vegetable really. It doesn't have to be as you would actually do it at home when you cook the recipe, you can you can slightly, slightly undercook, and it'll just make everything fresher. Uh, and this is <laughs> this is just a, a thing that I've learned from my styling: uh, the power of the garnish. There is a lot of power in um, in what you put on the top of food, and it's surprising how this goes. Like here's a shot I took last week. This is one of my five plus a day ones. Um, you know, that's a nice shot. I think that looks pretty good. The food is beautiful. It's, um, you know, it's colorful. We've got, we've got a little bit of garnish there with the dukkha on top of those carrots. 
uh, roasted baby carrots, delicious. But, but actually just have a look at how different it looks just when you add that little bit of green on the top there. So we've got the herbs and we've got the black pepper sprinkled across the top. Uh, and it just really lifts it. So there it is, there. Yeah. And then with your garnish. So be generous with your herb garnishes. Anything green that you can get on top of food really, really helps. And uh, that is particularly true for food that is brown. I mean, obviously we don't really wanna be shooting plates of food that are just brown and white because it's not probably not healthy food. But if you've got dishes that are predominantly brown, <laughs> if you can get a bit of green on top of them or a bit of white, green, white and red. So green herbs, white um, yogurt sauce dressing and red like chili flakes, um, any kind of red garnish will lift a plate of food like you wouldn't believe. And black pepper, surprisingly, try it yourself. Shoot something with, with just normal and then sprinkle over some black pepper, coarsely ground so that you can see it. Um, you'll be amazed how different that looks. It's kind of like a little bit of magic. And then a the thing that I like to do and I think also looks quite modern is to mess things up a little bit. So I wanna show you three plates here. Um, this is, and again, apologies, this looks a little bit low res, but, um, but I just wanna show you, this is three layers, if you like, of garnish. So here's, here we've got some, these are Korean chicken tacos. That looks nice. You know, you've got, you've got a bit of black pepper on there already. Um, but just have a look what happens. This is dressing on the top, bit of yogurt, bit of pepper. You can see how that's lifted. And then my favorite is actually this one where we, and a subtle difference there is just that dish of yogurt and sauce in the top right hand corner, where we just mess it up a bit. I've just, I've just swirled the spoon through. So have a look there, there it is there, dressing, mess. And it just gives it a little pop, gives a little bit of magic and interest. Uh, likewise, this one, I mean, this is a nice, this is a nice bowl of food. Um, this was, I shot this on my phone last week. Uh, it looks good, it's colorful, it's already got garnish. It's already got a bit of mess and you see those chili flakes on the side there. I mean, obviously you wouldn't do that normally at home, but I think it's nice to have a little bit of something messy going on. But I noticed after I took these pictures, I actually put the fork into the middle and messed it up a bit, pulled it up a bit. And you can see that that's just so much nicer. You can see the vegetables, you can, you can get a sense of what's in there. Um, and it just kind of, it just looks more interesting. So there and there. Um, I just think I just think a little bit of mess can go can go a long way. What you want to do, the key to that whole mess thing though, <clears throat> is take the photo first before you mess it up, because sometimes messing it up can go wrong, uh, and you want to make sure that you've got the shot before you mess it, because once you've messed it, you can't unmess it. And here's some more. You know, I mean, you wouldn't obviously you wouldn't do this at home. You wouldn't have messy herbs scattered around on your dining room table, but it looks really nice in the photos. So just have a little bit of, maybe a little bit of the food prep stuff um, going on where you can see just a little bit of, a little bit of mess there. So, we've, you know, I've got the Parmesan cheese on that one on the right, that bake, and then there's a few herbs on the, on the left. Um, sometimes experimenting with that kind of thing can really lift, really lift a photo. Um, just a few other little styling tips. Uh, it's, it you, <clears throat> can take quite a long time sometimes just to shoot a, a dish and it can start looking, it can dry out or it can look stale. Things can congeal a little bit. So some, some tools for keeping food fresh. Um, I, just have a, I just have a little aerosol spray bottle that I fill up with water and you can sometimes just gently mist the food with water that'll help to keep things looking kind of moist. Uh, uh, some paint brushes are useful for perhaps just again re-lubricating um, things on the plate. So if you have a, a little dish of oil, you can just sometimes brush on a little bit of oil if you need to. Um, cotton and brushes are good, for, dry brushes are good for just clearing things off plates that you don't want to be there. Cotton buds, the same thing. You can, um, you can just move things around if you need to and tweezers, the same thing. Like just anything that you can, that you can use to, to tweak. Sometimes things in photos look weird and they don't look weird in person. So when you look at the photo after you've taken it, you'll see something looks out of place or it looks odd. You can just use your, your tools to go in there and, and, um, and fix that up. Um, yeah, just, just remember layers and texture. So remember 
layers and texture in both your props, the things around your food, and in your food itself. So, so that's the the things that you add on top of the food, the things that you that, that you add to the to the dish that are going to layer it and give it texture. And ultimately, what you want to what you want to think is, does this food make me go yum? Does it make me want to dive in there? Does it, does that make you want to lift up that spoon and serve yourself a plate of that dish? That's what you're aiming for. You know, do you want to get in there with a the fork and just grab a bit of that fish and, and you know, and eat it? Um, if you can achieve that, if you can, if you can make people go, oh, yum, I want to make that, then, you know, you're there really. So if, that, if, that's, if that's how it makes you feel, that's, that's the goal. Um, and there's tons of inspiration out there in the media. You know, look at food magazines, look at social media, look at, um, you know, all the different um, people doing beautiful stuff online um you know food blogs and things like that it's a really really good for inspiration uh, and have fun ultimately because food is fun right you know that's why we all we all love food because it is just so much fun and um you know it, taking pictures of food is really fun too so so try and just um, remember that when you're doing anything with your you know taking pictures of your food and and just yeah enjoy and that's, so that's really, that's, <laughs> that's it from me for now. Um, but I would be delighted to take questions or clarify anything if anyone would like to know. Anything else? Hello? Can you still hear me? Hello. Oh, hi. Hi. Hi, Nikki. It's Margaret here. Hi. Um, I'll just jump in and help out here. So um, we do have some questions. Um, it says, uh, one person says, is a lot of food styling based on personal preferences or are there generally accepted photo styling rules of the things that you're sharing? Um, I mean, it's a bit of both, I think, because everybody has their own style. And you will know, if you follow people on Instagram, you'll know that people have different styles and, and very signature styles a lot of the time, too. You know, I mean, there are certain rules, I suppose. Um, I mean, and they're mostly the things that I've talked about, the things about light, the things about um, angle, you know, it, there are there are things that you do and you don't do. Um but in general, it's a little bit of both. It's a little bit of both. So, so you know, certain certain people I know have very different aesthetics, but they but they're all, they're doing different beautiful work. So it's it's really kind of art, fashion, um, preference, uh, different people's style, different people's aesthetic, as well as just general you know general rules about what you do and don't do. I mean, you know, there's things that you just definitely don't do, like putting um, putting non-edible things on plates, putting, um, putting uh, you know, raw food with, you know, there's, you know, there's certain things, <laughs> food safety type things that you, that you definitely don't do. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And another question um, is what apps can you use for editing photos? Yeah. So the one that I have used is called Camera Plus. Uh, and I found that to be quite good. That was before I upgraded my phone, um, and I now just use the, the inbuilt editor in the in the phone. Um, that's the only one I've got experience with. But hmm. uh, but if you go, if you look in the app store for for image editing, I'm, I'm sure that you'll find lots of lots of different things. But I would encourage you to just check on your on your phone itself and your in your in your photo library. Um, when you go and have a look at and just click on edit that's what you do on an iphone so you go i'll show you um where are we so if you here's a here's a food shot so i don't know if you can see there yes so up in the up in the right hand corner it says edit and when you click on edit you will get into an editing mode there and and there's all those tools at the bottom are all editing tools and you can um you can use those to adjust like that's where you get into adjusting all of your levels and things so do check what you've got in your actual inbuilt to your phone because you might be surprised what you find there and that that, that might do the trick um, never use i mean I, I don't ever use filters on instagram um, for my food images when i post them i will always do the editing 
outside of Instagram and just post the image as I want it to appear. The Instagram filters are very artificial and they make things look a bit weird. So in general, so I, I wouldn't use an Instagram filter um, unless you really don't have any other option. And Nikki, I remember you were going to share um, what was your favorite or your most popular post oh, from last year. Did I? Goodness me. Um, hang on, I can have a look. I forgot. Oh. <laughs> Um, I'll tell you what I've done recently that's been very popular because it was a bit surprising. Um, what was it? Oh. While well, Nikki's doing that, Mark, I'm sorry, I disconnected somehow. Um, thank you for stepping in. Have we shared the poll? No, should we do that? Should we do that while well, Nikki's? Um, so we have a, a poll. If, we, if you just take a minute to answer this poll, we do have an opportunity from a professional food stylist and food photographer that that's what they do um, full time for their job. And we wondered if you would like an opportunity for them to share. Nikki has been incredibly useful and practical, but if you could actually... Um, take just take a look would you like us to host um, an additional session or was today enough if you could just put yes or no into the panel that will help us tremendously and um, we'll just take a, a minute to do that while Nikki's finding her favorite or most liked post yeah, sorry, I've just I forgot about that one, and I, I've just um, been looking back over over last year's photos. It's actually interesting on my Instagram that the um, the most popular photos of mine tend not to be of food; they tend to be of um, vintage dresses or sewing. <laughs> but but um, I can show you, and I might be able to do this on my Instagram actually on the web. Um, let me see if I can find that. You just carry on amongst yourselves. And I'll go into my Instagram. Yeah, Mag, I can't see the results of this. Oh, Can so you? Um, just about most people, just about everyone has voted. So um, 90% say they would like to learn more and 10% say, no, thanks, this overview was fine. <laughs> yeah, excellent. So, so, I mean, professional stylists will be, will be doing a lot more styling than I am. I mean, I, you know, I've done a lot, but it's not, um, it's not my main thing. And so, they, you know, whoever it is would have, um, would have their own... Um, you know, things to say about about what they like to do, and I'm sure it would be super useful. I always get things out of that. Um, you know, uh, Nikki, I think you're way more advanced than the majority of us here, so this has been incredibly practical. Well, um, another question is, do you post food immediately, or do you do it later? Well, so if you're out, out for dinner, does yeah. it, do you, is it an instant thing? I don't think it really matters. I mean, who, who's going to know if you post it a day after you've eaten it or two days after? I mean, really, what does it matter? If, unless it's unless it's very um, very timely that you need to do it straight away. I would. I don't usually do it straight away. Um, I'm usually enjoying the food at the time that I'm that I'm taking a picture of it. So I'm I'm shooting it. I'm posting it later on. Um, mm. But it's it's really up to you. And it's kind of like that's how you manage your social, isn't it? Whether you do things um, straight away or you take your time over them. Yeah, how often would you be doing it? Uh, it really depends on my own workload. I mean, I'm kind of not that I, lately, I've been doing a lot less posting just because I've been really busy with work. Um, and it just for me, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a, a huge influence, it's not my main, um, you know, my main way of doing my business so it's not it's not that important to me to keep sharing to keep sharing to keep feeding the the gram or whatever I just do it um you know whenever I can so maybe a couple of two or three times a week maybe yeah I, I will show here's my most popular food image from last year I, I'm gonna um, bring it up then and I'm share my screen and you'll see that it's actually kind of a something I didn't mention but I will um hang on a sec let me get back into the zoom I'll share my screen and you can see what the, why, and you might have an idea of why this is a popular photo. <laughs> so that's me, me and my nephew eating um, homemade pizza, and um, you know, there, there's two there's two images there, but that's the main one. There's the there's the pizza. So you know, that's lovely, isn't it? And um, 
Sorry. And putting putting some you know character and uh, and people in the yeah. photo. Yeah, so, so having people in photos is always, and that's why that's why I think also. I mean, this is off topic, but that's probably why I think that my dress my dress images get more likes than my food images. It's because there's people in them. You know, people people like to see people. Um, and this was just a, this is just a really fun shot, which happens to have food in it, but also you know, and and we there was a I, the, you can see that with the wording there we. Um, I put something funny about how we disagreed about whether it's appropriate to have pineapple on top of a pizza, you know, and people like that. People like that kind of lighthearted type of stuff. So yeah, don't forget to add a bit of add a bit of levity. Um, it doesn't have to be serious. That's right. You can take it all a bit too seriously. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Does anyone have um, any further questions? I'm surprised nobody's asked me about, um, you know, hairspray and stuff like that. People always usually ask that about food styling. Oh, don't you put hairspray on the food and smoke and stuff? Because of what they've heard about what used to happen in the old days. That doesn't happen now, by the way. <laughs> but in the, in the, I mean, I don't know if you've ever looked at old cookbooks, but, um, you know, there used to be a thing of, because photography was expensive in the olden days. And, and so, um, you know, to get photos, to get food looking, good in photos they used to do all kinds of things like put glycerine on things and spray things with hair spray and you know weird stuff like that but the, the, now that doesn't happen we don't, we don't put anything inedible on food to make it look edible that's good to hear <laughs> although we're seeing a lot more um you know whole food styling you know with with the tv shows and everything and you know some really outlandish kind of ways of of presenting food on tv yeah, and, and restaurant food. I mean, restaurant dishes again. Like, I'm not a restaurant chef. I'm not plating up like, to look like restaurant food. Um, but that's a whole different way of styling of food. And you know, that's what we pay for when we go out to a nice restaurant, right? We want that we pay a little bit for the food to look amazing on the plate and to look different from how we can make it look at home. Mm. So, my, so my area is really not that. It's it's the food that we eat, cook at home, and and you know what that looks like. Great. I'm back on board. Apologies. I obviously have some internet issues here. Nikki, today has been fabulous. Um, thank you very much for sharing your very practical tips with us. I just wonder, there's a bit of a challenge for people here today. How about over the weekend taking a food photo and uh, putting it up onto your own social media feel free to put it onto the a and a facebook page i in fact will put a post up there that you can comment on with your photos and we'll we'll ha have a little surprise prize for um the, some, those of you that actually do post post on our a and a facebook page um there's there's a bit of an incentive for you um yeah. there's a yeah, there's a couple of thing people coming in here saying thank you very much. So um, very, really appreciate um, this. And it's inspired me to get out my phone for the weekend and, and take some photos. So thank you, Nikki. Have a great weekend. Thank you to our listeners and kakitiano. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah, bye.